Hello dear friends, this is Ewell Humphreys. I'm glad to be with you to bring you about a five or ten minute message from the Word of God. I've entitled this message a message that we need to hear, know, and understand, and that is that we have we have a, 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 a message that is so important. I, uh, I uh, read a message by Billy Graham when he spoke years ago in Washington, D.C. before the Washington cabinet of uh, staff there in Washington and he entitled the message the cradle the cross and the crown and I'm going to borrow that title and I'm going to say this message is based on that true great truth and I would like to inform you all and this is just a few minutes and that is the cradle the cross and the crown first of all there is the cradle we're talking about Jesus Christ he was born in a manger, born of a virgin, born a miraculous birth because he came from God and he was God and he became man. The Bible says in Luke, the second chapter of, of Luke, that uh, the angels came out and announced his birth to a group of shepherds on the hillsides of, of, uh, of Galilee. And there were, they were in the same country, shepherds were keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, an angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone about them, and they were afraid. And the angel said to them, Fear not. Behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Praise God. And so here was the announcement by angels that came out of heaven and spoke to a group of shepherds. God works through the lowly, the meek, the unknown. He don't usually work through the popular and those that are standing high among men, but he'll stoop down and help those that are insignificant to the world. A group of shepherds were the first ones that heard the glad news. Jesus' angels came, not to the uh, those uh, in, in uh, senators and leaders in, in Jerusalem or the leaders there but he, he went out to a lonely hillside and shepherds and there appeared to him the glory of God and they were fighting and the angel said don't be afraid I bring you good tidings of great joy it's tidings of great joy for into this dark world God has sent a light into this time of trouble God has sent a savior and to this time when people are going to hell without hope, God has opened the door to heaven. Unto you is born this day a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Go forth to meet him. Hallelujah. And we see this truth proclaimed over in John. It says that in the 14th verse that uh, the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And he came into his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them he gave power to become the children of God. Not to those who are born of the flesh or nor of the will of man, but who are born of God. And so we're saved by the grace of God. Not by what we can do, but what God has done for us through us through the Holy Spirit. Our spirit is dead. We just have a soul and a body. But God intended us to have a spirit, soul, and body where He can dwell with us. And in the beginning when He created Adam and Eve, He created in them spirit, soul, and body. And He lived in their spirit. But when Adam and Eve sinned against God and disobeyed, then that spirit died and God left them. And when you're born again and saved by the grace of God, by believing in Jesus Christ, He gives you a new spirit and a new heart. And then He puts His spirit in you. As in Ezekiel, the 26th chapter. I want you to believe it and receive it and know that it's real because God has done it. But He's come to you and He says, by grace, by grace are you saved. Over in in Matthew, the first, seven, uh, first chapter, it said, uh, angel said uh, uh, to, uh, to Joseph, She shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. And so thank God Jesus saves from sin, and that's the reason he was born. He was born to save us from sin. And that, that's so important. He came to do for you what you can never do for yourself. He, he, the Word of God, the, the power of God, the Spirit of God worked and Jesus Christ who was part of God became flesh and dwelt among us. And He came down to help us. 
I like the story of the little boy whose father was away in World War II. And he said to his mother as he looked at the picture frame of his daddy, he said, I wish daddy could step out of that picture and come into our house again. And that's what happened. God stepped out of the frame of, a, of the world. And he came into existence. He came to us. He came to us as our Lord and Savior. God was made man. And he took upon himself the form of a servant. And was made in the likeness of men. So that we could be redeemed by his blood. And saved by his grace. When you believe in Jesus. That he saves you by his grace. The Bible says over in the book of, uh, of uh, 1 Timothy. We read in the first chapter. In uh, fe verse 15. This is a faithful saying. Worthy of all acceptance, Jesus Christ came into the, world, into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. And so, we, Paul said, I'm the chief of sinners, but he came to save me. And he came to save you. And he came to save me. He was born in this world to redeem us and to bring us peace. And he wants to come into your heart. Pray a prayer like this and say, Dear God, please forgive me. I believe in Jesus. I believe he died for me. I believe he paid for all my sins. I believe he rose again from the grave. I believe he's coming back. Come into my heart and help me live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Pray that prayer. Just ask God to forgive you and ask Jesus to come into your heart and you'll be saved forever. And then you can go on and start living for him and finding his will for your life. And then we read this important thing. It's at the cross. It's at the cross. He went from the cradle to the cross. It's at the cross his blood was shed because the Bible says somebody has to shed blood for our sins or we'll never be forgiven. We have to see that. And Jesus shed his blood for you and me. <clears throat> Down at the cross where my Savior died. Down where for sin, oh, 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 I cried. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. Glory to His name, glory to His name. There to my heart was the blood applied, glory to His name. Oh, my dear friends, He died for you and praise God, He rose again. you got to believe that His blood was shed for you and that you're redeemed by that blood, saved by that grace forever. He came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. We read a part that notice that there will always be a time when we need we need to know that, that he's the Prince of Peace. And we'll never have eternal, everlasting peace until he comes back. And we, there's a scripture written in a corner that's chiseled into the cornerstone of the, of the United Nations building. It's a scripture out of the Old Testament. And here's what it says. And, and God shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people and, uh, and shall bear their and, uh, and they shall bear their swords and turn their swords into plowshares and their spears shall be turned into pruning hooks and they shall not lift up sword against nation but neither shall they learn war anymore that, that scripture is engraved on United Nations Cornerstone Building in, uh, in this great nation of America. But oh, out across the world today there are wars and rumors of wars. And there will be. But he's speaking here in this scripture. It's a prophecy of the time to come when Christ shall rule a thousand years upon this earth. And there will be a thousand years when God's peace shall reign. The Bible says over in Revelation in, uh, in, uh, in the 20th chapter of Revelation, we read these words. And I saw John saw the city come down out of heaven, and I saw him, and I saw thrones and powers and glory and the people that worship him. And then I saw the rest of the dead live not again until a thousand years were were uh, finished. This is the first resurrection. And so we see then there's going to be a thousand year reign upon the earth. Blessed is he that hath part in the first resurrection. And they shall be <clears throat> priests and pray unto God forever and shall reign with Christ for a thousand years. And then after the thousand years, Satan will be loosed 
and there will be the great battle, the last great battle, and then Satan and the evil ones be thrown into hell, and Christ will take his loved ones to heaven. This is according to the Bible. There comes a day when we shall know the truth that there is wonderful, wonderful power in the blood. Jesus Christ went from the cradle to the cross, and from the cross he went to the crown. He went to the crown. Over in the book of uh, of last and uh, first chapter of Revelation, I'd like to read you just a word there in the first chapter concerning the fact of his of his crown and of his resurrection. And it's a beautiful story, and it's a beautiful scripture. It says, "I John saw Jesus, and I saw him who saw Jesus, who is the faithful and uh, witness, first begotten of the dead, and he has made us kings and priests forever." And he cometh with clouds, whatever I shall see him. Jesus said, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. And so we see the crown. He is the Almighty, crowned in heaven, and all the glory of heaven is at his feet. And one day he's coming back. Oh, first there is the cradle, and then the cross, but then the crown. Hallelujah. And that's symbolic of your life, Christian. The cradle, you were born in this world. The cross, you have to come to Christ and die to self so you can live for God. But there's coming the crown. Jesus said uh, that he, there's a crown of, of life that is waiting for all those who believe in him. So believe in him today. Know that all is well. God is with you. He's coming back. He came, he came as he was born in a stable. He died on a cross, laid in a barred tomb. But oh, he rose again, and he's coming back in his glory. And ever I shall see him, and ever tongue confess, and ever knee shall bow before him, the Lord of lords, King of kings. God bless you, dear friend. He loves you very much. Trust him in all is well. You're going to make it, and God's going to love you to the end. Amen.